Good afternoon. Welcome to Channel One Lunchtime News. I trust you're having a lovely day so far. My name is Jackie and Bureau of Sign Language Interpreter is Susan Keheka. We have a comprehensive bulletin lined up for you this day and uh, to kick us off, Cabinet Secretaries since Monday this week have embarked on a countrywide tour to assess a school's a level of preparedness as the learners, learning institutions reopen. Now, Cabinet Secretary for Water and Sanitation, Cecily Karaoke, paid a visit to a number of schools in Kiambu County to evaluate COVID-19 prevention measures put by the schools. The CS was at Muchata Primary School, Modurwa Girls and Modurwa Primary Schools in Kiamba, Kiambu County, to assess the readiness of the institutions in reducing the spread of coronavirus among learners as schools reopen for face-to-face -face learning. And we want to issue the very best. And as well as learners' turnout following the long vacation occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. It was, however, evident that congestion in classrooms remains a challenge in many schools. A section of learners in these schools were forced to do their learning in open fields in order to attain the social distancing requirement. Following a directive, a number of cabinet secretaries have been on a mission to evaluate learning institutions' preparedness amid fears that schools may become spreading grounds if COVID-19 protocols are not adhered to. Meanwhile, the move by the Ministry of Education banning school visits has elicited mixed reactions from parents. A section of parents in Busia County want parents and guardians to be allowed to check on the welfare of the learners. Shababu kama wazazi ya waendi, basi media yende. Shababu media ndio kiocha jamii ineza tuletea reporti ni kwa nini ambayo inaendelea kwa shule. Na pia muzazi, shababu kama saa hii, ekonomi ya Kenya ni mbaya. Na sisi saa hii tunategemea basari ndio tusomesha watoto yetu. Na ukipereka basari, lazima hiko fumu inafaa ujaze shule. Tafadhali hapo tufafanulie kidogo, tupati kukwelewa vizuri hii access ya kuona watoto shuleni. Kuna mambo muhimu sana ambao tukerajia tupati fika shuleni. This even as others hail the order from education officials. Na fikiria tulika na watoto muda wakutosha nyumbani. Na ikafika wakati tunawawachilia walimu pia waende wakae nao. Kwa hivyo wazazi musiseme mnataka kuenda shule. Mnataka kuenda shule kufanya nini? Kila section iku na mpangilia waki. Kwa hivyo wasione tu mbaya sana ati waziri mago hamefanya jambu nyingine na kuwakera. Iyo ni mpangilio ambao sirikali meona utaratibu nye huko. Away from that, uh, we'll head over to Vihiga County where the memorial service for ANC party leader Musali Mudavadi's mother, Hannah Mudavadi, is underway at her home in Mululu, Vihiga County. Our reporter, Timothy Kipnoso, is on standby and gives us more details. <laughs> Kenya yes, a very good afternoon to you, uh, Jackie Wambiru, at the broadcasting house in Nairobi. Yes, indeed, just as you've mentioned, I'm coming to you uh, live from Mululu, Sabatia constituency, Vega County, where uh, the memorial service of uh, Mama Hannah Atsenzela Mudavadi is taking place a day after another uh, memorial service or a uh, requiem mass for that matter happening at uh, Friends International Center Quakers Church in Gong, Nairobi, where a number of leaders attended to pay their last tribute uh, to uh, the late Mama Hannah Asenzela Mdavadi, who is uh, the mother to one of the powerful politicians in Kenya, uh, ANC party leader who is also the former vice president uh, Musalia Mudavadi and is no, she is not only uh, the uh, mother to a powerful politician, a current, uh, current politician but also uh, she is a widow uh, to uh, one of the influential personality uh, during uh, the late retired President Daniel Toro Itich Arab Moise regime, Moses Mudamba Mudavadi who died in 1989 having uh, served as uh, the cabinet minister 
uh, for uh, local government in Moy's uh, regime. And uh, he was a man who rose from being a mere teacher to a district education officer uh, to a provincial education officer and also uh, to the positions of uh, serving as a minister in, in the government. And at the same time, he is one of the celebrated personality here in Vega. He was installed as the Maragoli elder in 1979 and he was uh, the second person to receive such honor after the ex-senior uh, 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 chief uh, Paul Agoy in 1940. And uh, just to paint a picture of uh, how the situation is, uh, uh, Somba Mood has, uh, of course, engulfed this area. And I'm joined by uh, one man who served, we serving with uh, the ANC party leader, Msalem Davadi, as the Secretary General for ANC in uh, Bungoma County, uh, Martin Waliaula. Many thanks indeed for joining us. And uh, um, how do you remember Mamahana? And uh, of course, uh, what is your, con uh, how was your message to uh, the people who are mourning? Today. Uh, my name is Martin Soita Waliola, the branch secretary for ANC Bungoma County. We are here to mourn Mama Hana Mdavadi. Uh, during uh, her lifetime, Mama Hana was welcoming. We have been to this home numerous times, and whenever we were here, she had good advice for us, especially the young people. She told us to respect leaders, to respect the government of the day, and uh, that is what uh, has made Honorable Msaliam Davadi to be who he, he is today. Uh, what we would say is that uh, Kenyans coming to mourn with uh, us here tomorrow and today are welcomed because I've seen that uh, everything in the home is set, uh, security is uh, tight, seating arrangements is uh, COVID-19 uh, friendly and therefore we welcome each and everyone to come and mourn with us. Uh, perhaps uh, it's, she is a mother of a politician and she was a widow to a politician and uh, yesterday we saw a number of politicians talking about the elusive Luya unit. What is your message to uh, the people of Western Region? To the people of uh, Western Region, I would always say, as I've said, times without number, that we are united as one. It's only the top leadership that are not united, but the voter in Western Kenya is united, and this time round we are united behind Wycliffe Msaliam Davadi. Thank you so much. Uh, there you have it. That is one of the leaders, uh, branch secretary for ANC uh, party, uh, Martin Waliaula, just giving his sentiments and mourning with uh, uh, Wycliffe from Salem Davadi, who is the ANC party leader, uh, talking about uh, Luya unity, of course. Uh, Awambiru, you understand that uh, that formed part of the conversation and for most of the uh, 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 politicians who spoke yesterday uh, talking about Luya unity. Remember, ANC party leader Salem Davadi has been on the front line talking about the same and uh, recently, he, he him together with the, the Ford Kenya party leader Moses Masika Wetangula uh, actually agreed to work together. And we, we of course, uh, uh, um, uh, in, uh, 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 we are going to uh, see a number of politicians, of course, talking about uh, the Building British Initiative. And of course, uh, the, uh, Mr. Wadi being one of the pa pa people that have been talking about the same. And uh, he was he was opposed to the Building Bridges Initiative, uh, but uh, again he. Uh, actually uh, gave a uh, hands-on uh, during the uh, uh, unveiling of the document on uh, 26th of November uh, 2020 when uh, a number of issues that he raised uh, including uh, the office of ombudsman uh, being in charge uh, with the chief justice not the president actually um, inter interfering with the independence of the judiciary and of course we also uh, um, uh, uh, we, are, we are going to see a number of politicians talking about uh, the Matungu constituency by election that is slated for uh, in March this year, and of course uh, uh, the Kabuchai. And remember, Salem um, Davadi together with Tangula have ring fenced that particular seat, uh, saying they will not field any candidate in Matungu, leaving for ANC, and of course for Kabuchai, leaving for Ford Kenya. And that uh, sends a message that uh, the elusive Luya unity is uh, going to be seen one billion. Of course, we will update our viewers in our subsequent bulletin on uh, how what will transpire here. A number of politicians, including uh, the governor of, uh, of, um, uh, of, this, of this, the host governor, Wilbur Oticillo, has attended this particular memorial service. And of course, uh, the governor uh, of uh, um, uh, the, uh, Jim, Jim Songwai of uh, Kisi and a number of uh, local politicians, inclu including a uh, former governor of uh, this county, Moses Akaranga. And of course, we will expect uh, a number of politics tomorrow when the Mama Hana uh, Asenza Mdavadi will be laid to rest. From me, Timothy Kipnusu, I hand you back to studio, Jackie Wambiru.
Well, that was our reporter, Timothy Kipnosu, coming live from Mululu in Vihiga County, where the memorial service for ANC leader uh, Moselia Mudavadi's mother, Hannah Mudavadi, is underway. She will be laid to rest tomorrow. Now, moving on. Nurses are now appealing to the president to step in and intervene on the ongoing stalemate in the healthcare sector. Through the Kenya National Union of Nurses, the healthcare workers claim after lengthy consultation on ending the strike, the county government seemed reluctant to sign their return to work formula. The nurses have vowed to continue with the industrial action until conclusion on talks are made. Purity Musea with more details. after donning tours on the 7th of last month. But even after concluding the talks, nothing seems forthcoming from the county government who are reluctant to put pen to paper. It is clear that we, the nurses, have been neglected by the government and we are not taken uh, with the seriousness that we deserve. The Council of Governors has refused to sign the return to work formula arguing that they were not consulted during the negotiation process. The nurses' union officials say the two levels of government agreed to honor all issues raised on their demands and are now perplexed by the change of mind by the employer. All the issues that were raised were discussed and agreed upon by the representatives of the national government and the county governments. And the draft is with the Ministry of Labor awaiting signing. It is therefore not right for the Council of Governor to try to run away from a process they know. The officials are calling on the president to intervene and rescue the health sector, which they say is in ICU. Now we have a Ministry of Health saying, yes, we are committing to look for money to finance this return to work agreement in terms of risk allowance. And then we have a Council of Governors now shifting their goalposts. We therefore, as a union, humbly request the president to intervene and ensure that this issue is resolved so that it does not lead to total collapse of healthcare system in Kenya. The nurses plea coming as clinicians commenced their nationwide strike barely a week after calling it off. Through the Kenya National Union of Clinicians, the clinicians accused a section of county governments of issuing suspension letters to some of their members who took part in a strike last month that lasted 26 days. Close to 98,000 Kenyans have been infected with the COVID-19 disease. With the virus mutating, it is not easy to tell how many may require hospitalization in the future. While there are other conditions taking Kenyans to hospital, but they are not getting these health care services. With nurses now on strike for a record a month and two days, when will the employer bring this stalemate to an end? Purity Museo, Channel 1 News, Nairobi. In Subuke sub county, Nakuru County, are up in arms with the local authorities after a public servant who allegedly defiled a 12 year old girl was released from custody. The accused is said to have lured the teenager to his house within the same residential premises before he sexually assaulted her. The rich residents are now calling for investigations into the circumstances under which the suspect was released after being held in police custody for hours. The class 6 girl was reportedly undertaking household chores on December 27th at her parents' home where the suspect had rented residential premises. It is then when the accused lured his victim to his room and sexually assaulted her. According to the residents, the suspect was arrested but later released after allegedly paying 10,000 shillings and agreeing to pay the girl's parents 300,000 shillings as compensation. However, the irate Makutano residents who took to the streets have condemned the incident and called for investigations into circumstances under which the suspect was released.
tuone haki ya watoto wetu mimi kile ningetaka kama ni serikali ya county government ya li wanapoandika wafanyakazi they should check from the ground wajie hiyo mtu tabia zake ziko namna gani according to makutano village chairman samuel omoyo the suspect is facing 11 other accusations of defilement and indecent assault on minors since he was posted in the region less than 5 months ago si mtu ambaye anaweza ishi na mwanadamu wa kawaida watoto ambao wametuletea complaint sisi kama nyumba kumi ni watoto wengi hata isipokuwa leo ilikuwa siku ya shule mungeshangaa kwa sababu huyu jamaa anajisifu na pesa anasema pesa kwake si shida Omoyo revealed that many of the victims and residents were willing to record statements with the police that will facilitate the arrest and prosecution of the middle-aged officer even as the residents call on government administrators in the area to move with speed and arrest the suspect. Lakini mama mwenyewe alikuwa anataka kufichiria jambo hili kwa sababu ati kwamba yule mwenye kufanyia mtoto wake kitendo hiki cha unyama ambacho ni cha kumbaka ni jirani yake na ni tenant wake ambaye amekuwa akitoa pesa nzuri za kukomboa nyumba. Sasa ikawa ni afichiliwe na hiyo mambo ifunikwe. Lakini kwa sababu ya hamaki ya wananchi tulikuwa tunataka kufikia jinsi ambavyo mtoto atasaidika. Weekly for Kate, Channel One News. A family in Kulamaya area in Isiolo County is in distress following the mysterious disappearance of the Akin. 62-year-old Abduba Buruwako was last seen on the 25th December 2020 when he left his business premises in Isiolo town to go home only to disappear into thin air. His family is now calling for speedy investigations on the whereabouts of the missing kin to end their agony. 62-year-old Abduba Boru Wako was a meat vendor in Isiolo town. He was last seen attending to his meat business on the 25th of December 2020 before he left Ali to go rest at his home in Kulamawe area, only for him to disappear without a trace. Calls to him went unanswered until around 11 p.m. when the phone was switched off. Tulifuata after 30 minutes, tukifika nyumbani, tuliuliza mama, tuliambiwa musa ajafika nyumbani. Wakati wa sasa tulijaribu kumpigia simu yake, simu yake yote ilikuwa mteja. Alikuwa na simu mbili, yote ilikuwa mteja. Tulijaribu kumpigia hata marafiki wake wale yeye anakaanga naye anatembeanga naye. Ulituambia hata moja hajamuona. The pain of his disappearance becoming too much to bear for his wife Bahati Abduba who was heavily pregnant at the time and was forced to give birth prematurely. Kaangalia usiku ni dukani mekosa hata mtu akunisaidia. <laughs> His firstborn son Amos Wako reported the matter to Isiolo police station on the 26th of December 2020 before the matter was referred to the Directorate of Criminal Investigations tulienda kwa DCI ya Isiolo uh, to track ye number wakati tu wali track walitoaambia waliona mishoe ya simu ilifunguliwa Banda Home in Langata Nairobi tulijaribu kuuliza usaidizi yote saa walijaribu walitoaambia watatuma signal kwa kila police station atupatie feedback kutoka hiyo wakati hatujapata usaidizi yote the family is decrying the slow progress in the investigations aimed at finding their missing kin and want the national government to intervene. Officers at the DCI offices in Isiolo town who insisted on speaking off the record, however, affirm that investigations into the matter are still ongoing. For Channel One News, I'm Safin Aching Oma. On a separate matter, hundreds of coffee farmers from Gateway Farmers Cooperative Society Limited in Gatendo South, Kiambu County, are counting losses after their produce worth millions of shillings was stolen on Thursday. Gatendo South Sub-County Police Commander Sylvester Gedungo claimed the robbers cut the society premise fence tied up the two security guards on duty and escaped with 100 bags of coffee beans valued at close to 3 million shillings. We hours of Thursday morning, robbers are said to have removed 100 bags of parchment coffee from Gateway Farmers Cooperative Society Limited stores in Gatundu, South Kiambu County. 
hawezi vile kulipendeka hakuna mtu anaweza ku explain ama kusema kulienda hivi na hivi kwa sababu hilo jambo lilifanyika kama saa kumi ya asubuhi mane walikuwa pale uh, walifugwa na hatukupata uh, warning mapema such that to interfere the farmers regretted that the theft happened despite a high presence of security guards and sniffer dogs that have been manning the premises day and night sasa siju tutafanya nini jukawa iti ilienda sasa naomba serikali mtu saindie muwe mnachunguza na mnatuwekea security vizuri led by gatiba gitao the farmers who are counting losses worth millions of shillings say the incident is a major setback as they were eagerly waiting proceeds from the produce atujua tunalima alafu kahawa inakuja inaibiwa na hatujui ni nani wanaiba according to gatundu south sub county police commander silvester gidungo detectives have launched investigations into the incident tunafuatilia tuone kama tunaweza likafa hiyo na dcio anaendelea na uchuguzi uh, and we hope at the end of the day uh, tutapata mwelekeo kitu gani ilifanyika According to Gidungo, all coffee factories in the area will be guarded by both security guards and police. Ben Chumba, reporting for Channel One News. Well, that report by Ben Chumba brings us to our first break here on Channel One Lunchtime News. We'll be right back in a GIF. Welcome back. Now let's head over to Riara here in Nairobi County where the United Democratic Alliance Party has been unveiled and is issuing certificates uh, to party candidates who will participate in forthcoming by-elections at their offices. Now let's listen in. Nairobi. <laughs> Kuna maswali mengi yanaulizwa na wakenya wapenzi ambao ni wafuasi wa UDA na wanajihusisha na mambo ya uchakuzi na kujipanga. Mimi nataka niambie wakenya pahali walipo popote chama cha UDA kitafanya uchakuzi ambao utahusisha kila mkenya. Na tunaanza katika chakuzi za polling stations uchaguzi wetu utaanza kwa polling station in every polling station in this country tukifanya campaign tutakuwa na mwenyekiti na katibu wa hiyo polling station ambaye ndiye atasimamia kura yetu kutoka hapo kutoka polling station tunaenda village ukienda kila village utakuta wanachama wa uongozi wa UDA UDA itakuwa kila pale kutoka hapo tutaenda sub location na tukitoka sub location tunaenda location tukitoka location tunaenda division na tukitoka division tunaenda sub count na tukitoka count the sub count tunaenda count na hapo ndio tutakutana sasa tuchapue viongozi wa kitaifa wa chama kwa hivyo wale watu wanajichakua wana, wana huko na kujiita majina hatutaki kwenda hiyo barabara Atutaki kuto, tutoke hapa tuende Nyeri tukute watu wanajiita mimi ndio mwenyekiti atutaki namna hiyo tunataka tofauti na vyama vingine ili watu wanaoongoza wengine wao wamechukuliwa na wakenya na kutoka hapo sasa ndio tutafanya mkutano wa kulonch chama chetu cha kitaifa ambacho kitakuwa kimeleta viongozi waliochakuliwa lakini sio wale waliodhaminiwa na wengine kwa sababu wana nguvu ya kuwadhamini kwa hivyo ningeomba wananchi watulie na wangojie huu hii kazi itafanyika katikati ya mwezi wa nne na mwezi wa sita tumalize na wakenya watafurahia uongozi wa chama cha UDA UDA kazi ni kazi UDA kazi ni kazi kazi ni kazi asla wacha tupokee hawa wananchi wazuri kutoka Nairobi ambao wamekuja na na mama governor <laughs> 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 was 
Well, that was the unveiling of the United Democratic Alliance Party here in Nairobi. We shall be bringing you more details in our subsequent bulletins at 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Moving on. Nana Akufo Ado has been sworn in for the second term as Ghana's president hours after scaffold between rival politicians broke out in parliament. Soldiers were briefly deployed after the unusual scenes in one of Africa's most stable democracies. The president defeated his main rival, former president John Mahama, in December's tightly fought election. came to a head in parliament all MPs were voting on a new speaker. The situation escalated after one MP snatched a ballot paper and tried to run out of the building with it. Scuffles between MPs from the NDC and Mr. Akufo Ado's new patriotic party, NPP, neither of which has a majority, were eventually broken up by soldiers who briefly intervened. An NDC MP, Alban Bagbin, was later sworn in as Speaker. It is the first time Ghana has a president and a speaker from different parties. Earlier this week, in what was the final speech of his first term in office, President Akufo Addo had urged parliamentarians to unite and accommodate each other's views. The two parties have exactly the same number of MPs in the new elected legislature, so there is possibility of political gridlock. Last week, the NDC filed a petition on the Supreme Court seeking to annul President Nana Akufo Addo's victory, citing voting irregularities. The president obtained 51.6% of the vote in the 7th December election, compared with 47.4% won by Mahama, who served in the top job from 2012 to 2017. U.S. President Donald Trump has committed to an orderly transition of power a day after his supporters stormed Congress, provoking world condemnation. Trump's remarks posted on Twitter following a suspension were widely seen as his first public acknowledgement of electoral defeat. Trump sp spoke as a top Democrats called for him to be removed from office. Trump returned to Twitter on Thursday evening following a 12-hour freeze of his account after the social media company said his tweets could stalk violence. In the clip, he barely touched on his baseless claim of voter fraud, which had riled diehard supporters on Wednesday outside the White House. He said, now that the Congress has certified the results, a new administration that will be inaugurated on January 20th, his focus turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly and seamless transition of power, saying this was a moment of healing and reconciliation. Trump said he had immediately deployed the National Guard to expel the intruders, though some U.S. media reported he had hesitated to send in the troops, leaving his vice president to give the order. He also praised his wonderful supporters and promised that the incredible journey is only just beginning. On Thursday evening, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos became the second cabinet member to quit following the Capitol riot. In her resignation letter, DeVos, one of the longest serving members of the president's administration, accused him of fomenting Wednesday disorder. Earlier in the day, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow stepped down, saying she had been deeply troubled by the rampage. A survey by little-known pollster Trend and Insight for Africa, TIFA, indicates that if a referendum was to be held today, the BBI report would not see the day of light. The survey by TIFA claims there is general low knowledge of BBI as 84% are not familiar with its content and proposals. The survey by TIFA was conducted between the 8th to 19th December 2020 and had 1,550 respondents. The finding of the survey shows regardless of the low familiarity, 44% of Kenyans feel that the referendum should be held before the next general election. 
12% feel it should be held on the same day as the 2022 general elections, 31% after the 2022 general election, and 14% not sure. Further, Kenyans are nearly evenly divided over whether there should be any changes to the 2010 constitution before the next election with 42% in support, 46 not in support, and 12% not sure. According to the pollster, a slim majority of ODM supporters are more positive about having a significant yes versus no choice. Suleiman Yeri, Channel One News. Let's talk business. Director of Chamber of Commerce at Trade Department, Narrow County, Hezron Corey, has urged President Kenyatta to consider his decision on extending curfew to March 21st, saying most of the businesses in Narrow cooperating in, at night have been drastically affected. He said business owners had no alternative than to sack employees. sikuwa tunaomba ya kwamba kama inawezekana serikali kupitia kwa rais wetu mpedwa ya kwamba aondoe hii kafiu liposa watu wengi na wafanye biashara wakaweza kufanya biashara zao pasipo kuangaliwa masaa na mambo mengine kwa sababu ni kama maisha sasa imerudi normal no. kuna hizi petrol stations ambazo zinafanya kazi usiku ukienda mingi katika huu mtaa wetu ama katika tauni yetu ya Narok na pia katika nchi e, Kenya utaona ya kwamba zigineze zimeweza kufungwa kuna vijana wengi ambao walikuwa wanafanya kazi za usiku na hizo kazi basi zimeweza kusimamishwa ama wameweza kupoteza zile kazi zao kwa hivyo unaona ya kwamba wengi wao wataingia katika hali ya crime na kupitia kwa hivyo basi unaona ya kwamba insecurity gate Moving on, the Nigerian aviator sector is still apprehensive about the effects of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic on passenger traffic. The first wave suffered by the airlines left the operators writhing in pains, but so far since after the lockdown, none of the airlines has gone under. Details of this story and others in our Africa Business Roundup. Aviation industry stakeholders in Nigeria identify key factors that would enable the airlines and the aviation industry to survive. One of the factors they pointed out was to ensure a reduction of cost of operations, which includes cost of and availability of aviation fuel. Others include permanent waivers on customs tariffs for aircraft and spares and cost of aircraft insurance. The stakeholders also want the federal government to stop squeezing the finances of the aviation agencies by insisting that they re remit 25% of their earnings to the government. They argue that in the struggle to meet the federal government target, the agencies increase the cost of services they render to airlines and other players in the aviation industry. In other news, Boeing has agreed to pay $2.5 billion to settle U.S. criminal charges that it hid information from safety officials about the design of its 737 MAX plane. Now about $500 million will go to families of the 346 people killed in the tragedies. This and more in our international roundup. The U.S. Justice Department said the firm chose profit over candor impeding oversight of the planes, which were involved in two deadly crashes. The Justice Department said Boeing officials had concealed information about changes to an automated flight control system, which investigations have tied to the crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia in 2018 and 2019. The decision meant that pilot training manuals lacked information about the system, which overrode pilot commands based on false data, forcing the planes to nose dive shortly after takeoff. Boeing said the agreement acknowledged how the firm fell short. 
Meanwhile, Marx and Spencer has said its trading was robust over the Christmas period, but modest growth in food sales failed to offset big declines in its clothing division. Its overall trading performance in the 13 weeks to December 26 was down sharply on last year. UK revenues for the period were £2.52 billion, 8.2% lower than last year. M&S blamed on off restrictions and distortions in demand patterns due to the coronavirus crisis. International revenues took a big hit, falling 10.4%. Marks and Spencer also say that potential post-Brexit tariffs on part of its range exported to the European Union, together with very complex administrative processes, would significantly impact its business in Ireland and the Czech Republic, as well as its franchise business in France. Finally, all international passengers will soon have to test negative for COVID-19 before traveling to the UK. People arriving by plane, train or boat, including UK nationals, will have to take a test up to 72 hours before leaving the country they are in. Transport Secretary Grant Sharp said travelers can't board without having that negative test. It will be on top of the rule to self-isolate for 10 days when arriving in the UK. Mr. Sharp said the government was very keen to do it now because of the new variant of the virus identified in South Africa, which he said was caused great concern with the scientists. The new measures are expected to come into force across the UK next week and in Scotland. It comes after a further 1,162 deaths within 28 days of a positive test were reported in the UK, the second consecutive day of more than 1,000 recorded fatalities. There were also 52,618 new cases. The government has reiterated that it will not purchase maize from farmers in the foreseeable future and has left the buying and selling to maize to market forces. Now, uh, Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya is urging farmers to sell their maize stock to private millers and national cereals and produce board that has since been commercialized to stabilize maize buying prices in the country. A section of leaders and maize farmers in the country's maize belt regions urging the government to purchase maize stock from farmers. The government is adamant that it will not purchase any maize from farmers. Agriculture CS Peter Munya says the government left the buying and selling of maize in the country to the market forces after previous maize buying activities were frequently marred with irregularities. So we are not going to move to the old regime of storing maize, buying maize or even whatever else for purposes of uh, relief. He urged farmers to sell their maize to private millers and the NCPB that he says has gone commercial in a bid to regulate maize buying prices. NCPB is not required to store any food stocks for strategic food reserve. NCPB is supposed to create a trading division that buys uh, serious for purposes of selling to make money to sustain their operations and also for purposes of intervening in the market to stabilize the prices. Walijenga hizi kala za niza nini, walitumia mabilioni ya pesa kujenga na itusaidi wakulima wakati huu. Kwa hivyo tunaomba serikali wawese kutingatia hayo kutetea mkulima. Sasa sijui hii building itakatu ikue kama museum ama mahali pa kuangalia kwamba ni maindi njyo inauswa. Kwa hivyo sisi NCPP, Mosbridge, is ilo hakuna kitu inatusaidia. However, farmers say this has exposed them to exploitation as they have been forced to sell their maize at reduced prices to attract buyers. Maindi ambaye imedunishwa saidi kwa sababu kwa amba tuanasema wananunua na shilingi elfu mbili miatano. 25, njyo muna tuuzia. Sisi tumesema kwa amba hafadhali tukai na maindi yetu, hafadhali tusiagie ngombe. He assured Kenyans that there is enough maize stock to last the local consumption up to the next harvest season. He said in case of a deficit, the Ministry of Devolution will purchase maize from NCPB and private millers to replenish the strategic food reserve. The Ministry of Devolution, which is the one that actually do relief, the Ministry of Agriculture doesn't do any relief, is supposed to buy from the private sector. And if there is any food in 
NCPB and the NCPB feels that it wants to sell to uh, the agencies that are involved, then it can sell to them. But it's not a requirement. Based on Drew reporting for Channel One Business. And on health matters, the SAC doctors in Mombasa are now threatening to mobilize their colleagues in the private sector to join them, pressurize the county government of Mombasa to rescind its decision to fire them. The Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union Acting as Secretary General Dr. Chibanzi Mwakchonde, who was among those fired, said if they are not reinstated by Monday and the collective bargaining agreement implemented, they will urge the private doctors to boycott duty. The county government of Mombasa on Wednesday fired 86 doctors for gross misconduct and absconding duty. Serikali za county hazita chukulia masala ambayo tumeweka kwenye meza na masala ambayo tumekubaliana. Basi mjue kwamba wiki ijayo kama haya maneno yataendelea na vuendelea. Hii nchi nzima tutazunguka kama muungano wa madaktari na madaktari wote wa sekta ya umma na kibinafsi watasimama na madaktari wote katika nchi hii kwa hiyo tunataka suluhisho ya swala hili la migomo katika nchi yetu we have realized that uh, probably there is uh, still a lot of discontent from our members based on what deliberations have been happening and that uh, number two, we are also looking keenly at what is happening in the other counties. I think um, this strike in Mombasa County, it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, as you know, nearly 80% of um, the Kenyan population seek um, health care um, in public hospitals and we wouldn't want to see them um, suffer. <laughs> Well, that's all we had for you this afternoon. Thank you for keeping it Channel One Lunchtime News. My name is Jackie Wimbiro. Sign language interpreter has been Susan Thuku. Now, you, you can, we can check out our website for more news at kbc.co.ke. Have a lovely day.